Over the past 10 years, I've learned countless lessons that have made our homeschooling more peaceful, more productive, and purposeful. As I think about all of these things, I wish I could go back to my 26 year old self and tell them, but since I can't do that, I hope that they can help you on your journey with homeschooling from one homeschool mom to another. Here are 36 hacks that I know at 36 that I wish I knew at 26. Practice patience, not master patience, but practice patience. Patience is a virtue especially when it comes to homeschooling. I know they say, oh my goodness, you homeschool, you must be so patient. We all know that that is not true. So practice patience, give yourself grace, give your kiddos grace, allow margin so that there is room for patience. Present. Incorporate music. My kiddos love music. And for the longest, I did not do this. And it's so not wise, incorporate music as much as you can. Music does a great job at making lessons more fun and more rich, as well as just more enjoyable. So use songs to teach grammar rules and use songs to teach math. X power, parallel lines have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. Like use <laughs> songs to teach. It makes things so much more fun and it helps them to retain things a lot better. Start each day with prayer. You will need prayer on days that you think that you do not need prayer. So just go ahead and start your day with prayer. Create a dedicated learning space. It doesn't necessarily have to be a homeschool room. It can be your dining room table with a hutch on the side or with a cube shelf on the side. This helps with organizing your materials so that they're ready to go. And it helps with your kids knowing exactly when and where they're expected to be to get work done. We've done different things from our learning space being our dining room table and our couch to being a whole homeschool room. But it really truly helps helps to have a specific learning space. Use visual aids, using charts, maps, flashcards, these different types of things really help your children to enhance and retain the information that they are learning. So use visual aids. Create a routine, not a schedule. A flexible routine allows for structure without being so rigid that you can't accommodate the inevitable interruptions that will come throughout the day. Set realistic goals. If you've got 15 days of homeschooling this month, don't set a goal for the 15 days. Set a goal for 12 days. That way you allow yourself margin and room. So set realistic goals. And while you're at it, celebrate the small wins. Celebrate those goals as you accomplish them or as you accomplish small parts of them. Take a field trip. We really just started incorporating field trips in our homeschooling this past two years, and they have done such a great job at bringing learning alive for our kids. So 100% recommend finding a field trip that correlates with either your science, your history, your language arts, whatever, and utilizing that, so important. Prioritize core subjects first. So for us, that is the three R's plus Bible. That is reading, writing, arithmetic, and Bible. These are foundational for all other learning, so prioritize them. Incorporate physical activity. So, so important. We are currently doing the farm curriculum. I'll have more information about it in my description, but incorporating physical activity boosts the brain's function and overall well-being. So include regular exercise in your routine. It is so good for them and you. <laughs> take care of yourself. Take care of yourself to make sure that you are eating well, that you are drinking throughout the day, that you are sleeping well. Fellowship with other moms as well. This truly helps to rejuvenate you, refresh you, so that you can be an instrument in the Redeemer's hands when it comes to homeschooling your kids. Utilize online resources. There are so many free or affordable online resources that can truly help you to navigate through homeschooling multiple kids. And honestly, if it wasn't for LeapFrog, how would my kids know all of their sounds? <laughs> Limit screen time. Now, technology can be a great tool but be careful that you do not allow it to take over when it comes to homeschooling your kiddos. You can find yourself in a situation where 
your kids have too much access to screen time. So be very mindful of setting boundaries and rules and limits when it comes to screen time and also teaching screen safety. Incorporate hands-on activities. Even though you don't like the mess, incorporate the hands-on activities. That is how they learn best. Now, this is not necessarily school focused, but delegate. Delegate responsibilities. Teach your children to take responsibilities at home. This helps, teaches them life skills, and also decreases your workload because the truth is you are doing a full-time job as a teacher to your kiddos. Take breaks. Short breaks throughout the day can not only help prevent burnout for you, but also help your kids from burning out as well. Take breaks, it's okay. Involve dad. Like if it is possible, involve dad. Like if dad is a mechanic, have one of your kids work with him to learn how to fix a car. If dad is an engineer, utilize them math skills, have him do the math teaching. Learn to let go. These are words I'm speaking to myself. Learn to let go and allow him to get involved in teaching the kids. Schooling does not have to happen only while he is at work. Some schooling can happen on the weekends because some schooling can happen in the evenings. So utilize that. Teach problem solving. My kiddo is currently taking logic. When they were little, we did critical thinking. It is so important to teach critical thinking skills to our children. Join a homeschool group or a co-op. It doesn't have to be a big co-op. It can just be you and another friend. It really truly helps me to actually get history done for the year or to actually get science done for the year. If you're looking for some accountability or a group, to walk alongside with you in your homeschooling journey, check out Made to Homeschool. It's my homeschooling community and we'd love to have you. Check it out in the description. Embrace educational games. Kids learn so much through games, even Minecraft. <laughs> so embrace educational games and it can be such a fun way to learn new concepts. Make learning relevant the best that you can connect learning to real life experiences. They retain it so much better when they have little hooks to hook things on. Reflect and adjust. Talk about this all the time. It is so important to reflect on what is working and what is not and adjust accordingly. Encourage independent learning. Teach your children to work independent. Teach them how to learn. Teach them where to go to find different ways to learn, encourage independent learning and exploration. Read aloud. Read aloud helps your children foster a love of rich literature as well as improves their listening skills. So read aloud, even if it is an audiobook. Use a planner. Plan for a break. Use a planner. It is so helpful for keeping track of activities and lessons and different things like that. It is so much better to put it down rather than keeping it up here. Put it down. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your planner looks like. It could just be a notebook, but use a planner. Use audiobooks. That read aloud tip that I was talking about. Use audiobooks. Audiobooks are such a great tool when your hands are busy with little ones while trying to teach older ones or while you're driving in the car. Audiobooks give you such freedom to actually get literature in without necessarily being the one that's doing the reading. Keep lessons short. It is more important to keep the lesson short than it is to complete an entire lesson in one day. So set a timer, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, keep the lessons short. Young children have short attention spans. Maximize on that, keep it short, move on to the next thing. Foster a love of learning. And the best way to foster a love of learning is to love learning yourself and to show your kiddos that you enjoy learning. Sometimes that's just by learning alongside them. Embrace the outdoors. When it is nice weather, go outside in nature. Like do school outside, whether it's on the patio, whether it's in the front yard, on the driveway. Utilize the outdoors. The change in scenery can truly help with motivation and getting hard things done. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Less is more. Focus on quality over quantity. <laughs> Still lessons I'm teaching myself today but focus on quality over quantity. And this is not only in just materials, but also in activities as well. 
which brings me to use timers. <laughs> a timer can help to manage time effectively. So you're not the bad guy. The timer's the bad guy. The timer says you've got 15 more minutes, so let's just power through. Utilize timers, especially the ones with the big, bold faces. I'll have it linked in my description. Stay organized. I know that's a big one, but as often as you can, create a routine around staying organized. Whether it is once a quarter, I will work on transcripts, or whether it is once a month, I will go through and pull out all the records for my kiddos, or once a week, I will plug in the attendance. Stay organized as much as you can because it creates so much less stress than at the end of the year, trying to find all the things to organize and put the folders together. Incorporate life skills like including budgeting, cooking, baking, cleaning, gardening. These are all so important. And with homeschooling, you have the unique opportunity to prioritize life skills. They are essential for independent living. Celebrate achievements, not only when your goals are met, but just even unexpected achievements. Celebrate achievements, the small, the big. If you spend so much time celebrating, you won't focus on all the things that you didn't accomplish or how far you still have left to go. So celebrate the small and the big wins. It truly helps to keep motivation high. Trust God's plan for your homeschooling. Trust that the Lord has equipped you with everything that you need to educate and nurture your children. Be flexible. Flexibility is key. Be willing to adapt to your kids' learning needs. You might think, hey, it's just gonna be a, a, a carefree pre-K year and your child's just like, no, I wanna learn. I wanna do book work. And you're like, what? This is your year to do whatever you want and you wanna do book work? Be okay with that. Be flexible. Now, if you'd like to see some homeschool hot takes that didn't make the list, check out this video right here. Happy homeschooling.